Hello. Uh, welcome to Uber Cinco. May I take your order, please? Yeah. Can I get the special? Uh, do you want Do you want top five uh, archetypes to interact with at a wedding? That was their first part. Or or top five cookies? Uh, I'm all cookied out, but I guess I'll go wedding. Oh, sorry. We're all out of the wedding. Something else? Uh, I guess I'll take cookies then. <laughs> Oh, cookies. All right. Yeah. Uh, and for, for the guy next to you? Uh, just something fast. Just make it fast. Oh, sure. Okay. All right. Uh, fat, top five, uh, let's say, um, uh, knives to use to cut your meat. All right. That's... Number one, a sharp one. <laughs> oh, number two, no, uh, I take... a big one. No. Number three, one that, one that has cut meat before. Number four, your grandfather's knife. Number five. That cool one you saw on the QVC with a dragon on the handle. There's your fast five knives for you. Thank you for stopping by Uber Cinco. You guys have a nice day. Pull up to the final window. That'll be twelve eighty-seven. Thank you very much. Cheap knives. And welcome to Uber Cinco, everybody. The, the <laughs> podcast <laughs> game show where we deep dive top fives. Thank you for sitting through our our absolute baloney there. Um, I'm Mitch Brinkman the manager on duty today for this shindig and the folks patronizing the game show window today are none other than brian ernst and nathan hennefin today they'll be squaring off as they list off their top five fast food items ordered under pressure first to say hello he hails from the land of soy and corn he proudly describes himself as a sonic guy <laughs> it's nathan hennefin sir please pull forward and say hello <laughs> Hello, it's good to be here. I, I'm I'm very excited about uh, talking about fast food. This is great. Yeah, I I, I, I I eat a lot of I eat a lot of fast food, and by a lot, I mean not very much. So this is going to be just all of my staples. We're gonna we're just gonna hit all sure. of the ones that I I my absolute standbys. I'm not an expert, but I'm an expert on myself, as my therapist likes to remind me. So that's how I'm going to approach today. Nice. That is wonderful. Now, I feel like fast food, we are introduced to it as kids on road trips or after, you know, practices or school, things like that, where your parents don't have enough time. Also, high school. You, you go get fast food in high school. So I'm curious, Nathan, what car did you drive in high school? What kind of car? I had a 1994 uh, light blue Honda Accord. Oh my God! We almost had the exact same high school car. Okay, good. That, I'm, I'm gonna put that image in my head. That's gonna that you're gonna be in that car moving forward. Um, that's incredible. Thank you for that information. That'll help me a lot. Okay, on to the next guy, and it's our least favorite customer, the guy who asks for no cheese, easy secret sauce, and put the middle bun on the side when he orders a Big Mac. Say hello to Brian Ernst. Hello, Brian. Hello. I usually only ask for no pickles. That's all. That's all I ask for. <laughs> You asked for no pickles? Oh, it's the tang that, that balances out the sauce and the creaminess of the cheese. The pickle and at the a McDonald's, of the though, meat. is not a pickle. It's a, it's a sugar-ridden flab of sour vinegar. It's gross. Well, okay. I, I don't know how much sugar is in McDonald's pickles, but if that's your opinion, it'll, it'll remain that. I think extra pickles on McDonald's stuff is good all around. That's just me. Um, but... Also to you, Brian, in high school, I'm sure you went and got fast food. What car were you driving to the to the uh, drive through when you were in high school or, or early college? I didn't have my own car till college, so I would have been borrowing either my father's 1999 Kia Sportage or the, okay. <laughs> driving the 2003, you guys knew it well, Big Bertha herself, the Ford Windstar. <laughs> Windstar. Okay. Is a Sportage, is that a, is that a sedan or what is it that? It is an, a, a mini SUV probably now would be oh, considered like, a crossover like a crossover okay yeah. okay i think i think for the sake for the sake of fun i'm, I'm putting you in the windstar you're you're in the windstar from here on out that's great Nathan because the air 94. conditioning never worked in the kia sportage and you would also have to blast the heat to cool off the engine so i'm really glad <laughs> <laughs> i am not in that car during the drive through experience <laughs> <laughs> That's so so it was so it was fun to drive during winter it sounds like. I think um, I drove it to DePaul once at, during uh, it was like the summer months like early fall so it was still very hot. And sure. driving like up western or something and I had to put the heat on full blast while it was in the high 80s outside because the engine was overheating. <laughs> <laughs> so that was fun. 
God damn. Good times. Um, well, thankfully, Western, if your car breaks down, they're a great place to just stop off and buy a car. A lot of, a lot of car lots on Western in Chicago. Uh, okay, guys out there, if you've listened to the show before uh, and you want to make a suggestion, perhaps, Send in your topic ideas and questions at our very own delightful submission website, bizbear.biz. Rawr, check it out. It's very fun. Uh, and your brilliant comments could end up right here as an episode. Uh, now, if this is your first time in the Uber Cinco Den, let us wake you out of hibernation with a quick rundown of the rules. Each player in the den has spent time with today's topic, arranging their top five answers in order of importance. Those answers have been submitted to the host who will moderate the game, awarding points to the player with the most poignant answer. Starting with their number five choice, we'll move up the ranks until we reach each of their top answers. But if both contestants happen to have the same answer on their list, well, we have an Uber Stereo. You will hear the official Uber Cinco siren, and both players must reveal their answer and what number they ranked their submission. An Uber stare down is all or nothing, with one player earning three points. After all answers have been read, the host will reveal the final score. And we're back. Please look forward to the end of the show where I, your host, Mitch Brinkman, will rattle off my definitive Fast Five list of stocks that could use a Reddit community boost. Now, as host, I'm entitled to institute a house rule for today's game show, a rule inspired by my own formal and very respectful drive through credo. Thus, from here on out, if either of you fail to refer to me as sir, I will be deducting a point. And with that, I'll have Brian go first so Nathan can have a second look over the menu before he shouts his order from the backseat, which I won't hear at first, and then Brian will try and relay it instead because he's closer, but Nathan will be shouting at the same time too, and again, <laughs> I won't catch it. Till so finally, Brian has Nathan lean over him as he shouts it through the window, and I'll note that he wants no ketchup on the burger in his Happy Meal, but I forget, of course, and the burger comes slathered. So Brian, please give us your number five fast food item you order under pressure. All right, so... I'm going to let ads speak for me today a little bit to set the mood for what all of my choices are. So for my number five here uh, is a plug for Australian sandwich artists. I start with mozzarella cheese, add Parmesan and herbs like garlic, a pinch of rosemary. Sounds like a great sandwich. Sandwich? It was just the bread. Subway's new Italian herb and cheese. Fresh baked with savory spices topped with mozzarella cheese. Subway! I could only find an ad from Australia that fit my bread. <laughs> but I am going with the Italian BMT on herb and cheese. That is my number five. What? No way. Woo! Turns out Subway is a popular pick on today's show. Nathan, we have a stare down. Please tell us your uh, your um, Italian BMT variety because you have some you have some. Uh, I'm well. I'm in shock. There. I am in shock that yeah. we have, we crossed over on the exact same sandwich from Subway. <laughs> yeah. This is utterly outrageous. But this was my my number one. Oh, my number one wow. is the Italian BMT on Italian bread. I used to go with the urban cheese, but I've switched over to Italian bread. So Italian BMT on Italian bread with pepper jack cheese, lettuce, spinach, pickles, black olives, banana peppers, jalapeno, and ranch, and the bread is toasted. Oh, wow. Your sandwich <laughs> sucks. That's a, it's a train wreck it of a sandwich. Like a slop, it sounds like a slop fest. <laughs> Thank God the, uh, the, the the bread is half yoga mat, so it just like absorbs the ranch for you before it gets to your fingers. Oh, my God. That's so many items on your sandwich. I was not prepared. Okay, well, Brian, what, what, what do you do? You, do you go simpler than that on your Italian BMT? I go way simpler. I get a, a, a foot long Italian BMT on Italian urban cheese, lettuce, yeah. tomato, red onion, mayonnaise, Italian seasoning. And I know mayonnaise is not popular on Italian sandwich, but I, I but I enjoy it. So no, no no Italian dressing, no 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 sauce to sauce it up. No, no, no sauce. I mean, I just like the, I used to get, there was a deli by my house that used to always do that. And it was the first time they ever asked you when I ordered an Italian sandwich, I'm like, do you want that with mayo or no? And I was like, oh, people order this with mayo. And I tried it and it was delicious. So it changed my worldview. Interesting. Okay. I think now Subway, this is, this came, this came upon us in the nineties. I think, you know, when, when you guys were on car trips, I don't know, with, with your family, but I know for my family, 
if we pulled off, we're like, we want to get something healthy. We want to not, you know, feel like uh, get burger bloat. So we'd go to Subway. And I think Subway tricked us for a long time thinking it was a healthy, a truly healthy option. Because let's be honest, whatever lettuce they get, it's not the same lettuce you can buy at the grocery store. It is way worse. It's an alien form of lettuce. Uh, maybe it's what lettuce poops out when it shits. I don't know. Uh, but... <laughs> This is why it's at my right? number five, because Subway is my last, last, last choice for fast food sure. when I'm on a road trip. If I'm going for wherever yeah. it is and I'm say I'm under pressure to pick a fast food joint, this won't come out of my mouth right away. That's why I have it at number yeah. five is Subway is the bottom of the totem pole in terms of what I'll crave under pressure. Well, I, I never drive through Subway. Subway drive through takes two or three years to get a sandwich. No, so no, Subway no, you, is always yeah. is always a walk-in situation. That's one me. of the reasons why it's on the bottom of my totem pole. I got I got places yeah. to be. I got road to to tear up. <laughs> I can't be getting out of my car to stand in line to yell at a sandwich artist. I mean, come on. <laughs> now, okay, Nathan, this everything you add on here clearly you, you like the base of the three meats you like that you like that that trio there but you're not really in it for the italian flavor you're in it to add on a bunch of vegetables it sounds like yeah just uh, some some spice a little you know, the yeah. peppers is really what it's all about and th this this yeah. evolved over the years when i was in high school it was just like the pickles and black olives and then i started getting real real adventurous <laughs> as we all do in mm -hmm. our early 20s <laughs> and I went with the uh, banana peppers and the jalapenos. But the reason this was my number one is the pressure situation. Um, Subway, I, Subway <laughs> makes me so anxious. If there is a line in Subway, I, I have this down. And I do not want to take any extra time because I don't want to be that person who sits there and like Elaine and Seinfeld at the Soup Nazi and just like, tapping their hands on the on the glass and hmm, <laughs> what do I do I want the do I want the spinach or the red onions or it's like you've been here before this is not your first rodeo in subway there are people waiting let's get this thing yep. moving this is supposed to be fast food and you're holding it you can actually watch other people other customers hold you up and it just infuriates me so I borderline even though it would be absolutely disgusting, every time I almost say no when they ask me if I want the bread toasted. And Subway untoasted bread is disgusting. But I am just so con self-conscious about wasting everybody's time that I almost say no. But since I'm taking that 30 seconds to toast the bread, I have to just rattle off this combination of uh, <laughs> condiments and extra ingredients that I have down so I don't waste any more time and I get out of there. That is why it's my number one, because it's the one where I feel the most pressure. And even that it's a dumpster fire of a sandwich, I'm still doing it every time. If I And then if, if I divert from the menu and get something that's not an Italian BMT and I don't know what I'm getting in with the ingredients, it could be so much worse. That same combination of ingredients on a meatball sub, for instance, would be just you should just toss it right in the garbage. So I can't I yeah. can't deviate. This is my subway order. It will be for the rest of my life. It will never be anything else. Just so I don't have a panic attack while in subway. So that's why it's my number one. So you're telling me you don't want to try the pre-made flat chicken breast with painted on grill marks to be <laughs> that are stacked 10 high to be slapped two at a time on your foot long? You're not going to deviate? I, I will oh. not. I am in a completely different boat from you. Like I have no anxiety in Subway. I treat it as if I'm in full on road rage. If anybody else is holding up the line, <laughs> fuck them. They're the asshole. But as soon as I get up there, I'm getting my damn sandwich the way I want it. And you can all wait. I want it toasted <laughs> twice. Extra cheese. That's not enough meat. Go back to the front of the line. Double up that meat. Thank you. I'll meet you at the lettuce. They come down now with my double toasted sandwich, and then we put it on exactly the way I want it. And I say, that's how I want my sandwich line. And then I pay for it, <laughs> get my little plastic <laughs> sleeve, sling it over my shoulder, and walk out the door. That's how I treat my Subway. The Subway bags are pretty. The The, the bags are, are nice. You actually can sling the Subway bag over your shoulder. It's. I feel like I'm moving out. Like It's like I get my sandwich. <laughs> Like a, like, a, like a homeless man in, in the depression in a box exactly. car. Exactly. I got my bindle. I'm looking for the nearest freight and getting out of touch. 
<laughs> and you, you come out the front door and someone's like, is that a yoga mat or a sandwich? And you're like, it's my lunch, baby. And then you <laughs> keep going. <laughs> exactly. Okay, now, is this real? Is the double toast a real thing? Because I've never seen anyone be that much of an asshole to no, double toast. No, that's me being an asshole for the fake of the show. I'm not going to go oh, double toast okay. my bread. Yeah, I was going to say, that should, be, that, that should be punishable by death. If somebody asked to, to toast the bread twice while I was waiting behind them in line at Subway. Yeah. I did see these that two That sounds idiots, like a, uh, a, a Yahoo News headline. It totally like, does. A TikToker figured out a Subway hack. Double there were, toast, right? there you know. were TikTokers. They got a comment. They just go and do things that people comment on their videos say to go do. So they read a comment yeah. that says, go to a Subway and keep toasting your sandwich until they throw you out. And they went and they did it. <laughs> and it was very entertaining. So Jesus. they got this blackened sandwich. And of course, there was some teenager sandwich artist behind the counter. was like, all right, man, I'll just keep doing it as long as you ask. This is whatever. <laughs> also, you guys at Subway, how often or has, has this ever happened to you where they say, like, do you want cheese or which cheese or do you want this? And you didn't you don't hear them. First, you but you yes. but you're nervous because you just go yeah sure 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 or yep. no 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 and then you realize you skipped cheese by accident you're like well, well you need to know that the American down. cheese are triangles the provolone are half circles so you got to tell by the shape oh. which cheese you're getting that's the most important I, thing yeah <laughs> well you need to uh, that's why observant. that's why I go that's why I go pepper jack because it's the type that has peppers in it see it's, it's the one with confetti pick the right yeah. cheese. <laughs> <laughs> And what, what are the meats in the Italian BMT? Does the BMT stand for what meat is in it, or what is it? Uh, Black I, Forest ham, pepperoni, and Genoa salami. So, what's BMT stand for? I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> I've I, this has been a mystery to me for a long time, and I've never looked it up. <laughs> because I was thinking, like, like is it is it like is it like BLT, but it's BMT? Is that what it is? Like bacon for lettuce? I don't. Is is mortadella? Supposed to be on it? Is that what it is? I yeah, I don't know. We're gonna, right. uh, we'll it. biggest, meatiest, tastiest is what it stands for. No. no <laughs> oh my god! Way. I swear to God, that is the, that is the dumbest thing. Subway's <laughs> best-selling wow. sandwich, the BMT, short for biggest, meatiest, tastiest, contains pepperoni, salami, and ham. The name originally stood for <laughs> Brooklyn Manhattan Transit. Subway also sells breakfast sandwiches. That's <laughs> why is it? Wow! <laughs> now I'm not, now after the, learning this, I may never order it again. Oh, I'm doubling <laughs> down. I'm getting the biggest. Or, or if I do it, I'm gonna I'm gonna order it. Yes, may I have the biggest, meatiest, tastiest sandwich that you sell at this restaurant, please? <laughs> oh. we, you guys need to start TikTok accounts and go in just to order. I'll have the Italian biggest, meatiest, tastiest, please. <laughs> Double toasted. Maybe that's why our numbers aren't going up as much as they need to. Guys, we're going to start a TikTok channel, the BMT boys, <laughs> and we are going to take over the Gen Z app. Uh, can I be, can, can I be meatiest of, of if, if we're the BMT boys? As long as I'm tastiest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm, so I'm the, biggest. the biggest. I'm the biggest. <laughs> All right. Tallest, it works. Yeah. Uh, wow. Okay. I'm, I'm. I'm I'm loving this, guys. Thank you so much for your uh for your for your words here. Um, this is tough. I have to decide who gets the three points, and oh, I'm gonna have to. I don't know. Nathan's Nathan's um order here with pepper jack, lettuce, spinach, pickles, black olives, banana peppers, jalapeno ranch. That's a wet sandwich. Okay, that's a very wet sandwich, but that shows me that he's bold. Much like the flavors in the Italian BMT, Subway's number one sandwich. Uh, Subway, eat fresh. Um, so I think I'm going to go. Nathan, you have this stare down. You get the three points. Congratulations, sir. Yes. Uh, and let's not forget, Subway has the most locations of any fast food restaurant in the nation. I think at just over, what, 13,000 locations, I think, nationwide somewhere. They were the, um, most, worldwide at the uh, most worldwide at one point, too, which is crazy. Yeah, I think worldwide they have like 125,000 or something, which is, you know, far too much. Um, <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, okay. Too much uh, time on Subway. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan, uh, bring us um, to your to your number five, please. Give us that. My number five is simple, pure elegance. Mm -hmm. This is Ooh. just a plain glazed donut at, at formerly Dunkin' Donuts, now just Dunkin'. Oh, just the plain glazed donut. 
That's an order. That's a great order. Is is that like fifty cents now at Dunkin'? I don't know what the price is. Um, okay, but it is. It's, cheap. it's it's yeah, very cheap, very yep. simple. I don't I don't frequent uh, Dunkin' a lot, but I do I do love a donut. I don't have much of a sweet tooth, so getting too rich, too many sweet flavors overwhelms me. Unlike in the uh, Italian BMT, where I can just go hog wild. But just <laughs> just the one simple flavor, uh, the classic glazed donut. I love this. And I actually haven't paid for as many of these as you would think. And this is what I really wanted to talk about <laughs> is my oh. favorite, my favorite thing to do with formerly Dunkin Donuts. Just Dunkin now <laughs> is is my absolute one of my all time favorite things in the world is going to Chicago Bulls games at the United Center here in Chicago. And the best part of any Chicago Bulls game uh-huh. is late in the third quarter, early in the fourth, they have the Dunkin' Donuts race on the big screen. <laughs> yes, they do. Yes, and you do. have in in this you before the game as you enter, you're given a card and it has it used to have like some contests from like Hinkley Springs Water and then McDonald. If the Bulls score over 125 points and win, everybody gets a free Big Mac. That's the coupon on there. And then there was the donut race. And the donut race was the most exciting of all of them. You had <laughs> on your card, you would have three characters. You could have either Cuppy Coffee, which was a which was a <laughs> cup yes, of coffee. Yes. Then you hit then you would have dashing donut. <laughs> Or Biggie Which Bagel, was a, a donut. Biggie yeah. Bagel, Biggie Bagel, and so the cartoon would be up on the on the screen on the scoreboard that's hanging over center court, and mm-hmm. the crowd goes wild. Everybody has a horse in this race. <laughs> Everybody's got their little card. You got twenty two thousand people just screaming, and the the cart like they they go three laps around this little thing, and it's like one of them will take off really fast, and then they'll start, and the, it's like they're running in water. These little cartoon, the cartoon mm-hmm. cup of coffee just barely moving, and then all of a sudden and they'll slingshot out and and this it's always it's always a come from behind win if you're if your cartoon character is in the lead going into the the third lap you might as well just tear that ticket up because they <laughs> they set it up for drama every time on these pre-recorded races and uh the it's the loudest it gets more than i think maybe once <laughs> at a triple overtime game six in the playoffs i heard it get louder for the actual basketball every other of the 50 or so bulls games i've been to the loudest moment when the crowd is most fully engaged <laughs> is during the donut race <laughs> and when i win the donut race i very proudly the next day will march into my local Dunkin' location and get myself that free glazed donut. <laughs> and even if they if you don't win the race, you can still just take the the, the people at Dunkin', they they don't know who won the donut race the night before at the United Center. They weren't there. So you can just take the you can just take the coupon and it'd be like, hey, I got the free thing. So every every Bulls home game, uh, twenty-two thousand free glazed donuts are available in the city of Chicago. <laughs> wow, I didn't even think about that. Like, oh, they must have a system where they scan it. It says like, nope, uh, dashing donut didn't win yesterday. Sorry, you he's know. got a ticket, uh, so uh, donut. If if the Bulls <laughs> yeah. are if the Bulls are down by twenty or more, I'll start asking around in the third quarter, seeing in my section, who's willing to make it interesting and put five or $10 down on the donut race and really sure. get the adrenaline flowing a little more. If the basketball <laughs> game's been disappointing, you got to salvage the evening somehow. So I'm willing to, to, uh, you know, lay some odds, you know, cuppy coffee is the, the classic pick because you think coffee, caffeine, energy. So you can, yeah. you can run, you can make him maybe like a, a, a two to one favorite and you'll really swindle some people that way. Wow. <laughs> have you have you noticed any patterns to this or um like if you go during the week um B- biggie bagel is more likely to win or if like weekend game cuppy coffee is going to take it have, have you have you done any research on this is there any well a, let a, me any deep state let me let me let me pull up my my excel spreadsheet on uh sure. yep <laughs> let's see this is 18 years of going to the united center <laughs> so that's yeah, so I, if it's uh, if it's the second Thursday of the month during mm-hmm. Lent, and yep. uh, the, their bowls are playing an Eastern Conference opponent, yep. and it falls on an odd day of the week, you're going to want to sure. put your money on Dashing Donut. That's got it. That is okay. an airtight strategy. That's a lot of parlays. <laughs> <laughs> 
Wow, this is that's incredible. Um, I love a glazed donut. I'm a donut man. Um, I love going to a donut truck. Uh, I was I was raised by a donut man. Daryl, shout out, donut <laughs> boys forever. Um, one of this. One of the saddest times I look back, uh, as a family, we, we transitioned from going every Sunday after mass, we would go to the local uh, bakery called Willette's on Grand Avenue in St. Paul. We'd get giant glazed donuts. They're the best. And at some point in like the late 90s, early 2000s, when Jamba Juice became popular, everyone was like, we need to get healthier. We need to Why? ingest more calories from Jamba Juice, but it's fruit, so it's healthy. And so we transitioned to going to Jamba Juice instead. And I look back and I'm like, that was so sad. We should have kept getting donuts every Sunday. Uh, <laughs> it is it is the Lord's fried food. Um, it is a holy, holy piece of of, uh, of wonderfulness. Um, I'm giving you three points. This is a no-brainer for me. Uh, I, I, I'll, I'll give you one tip. I don't know if you've ever had them, but the French crullers at Dunkin' Donuts, they're like beautiful pockets of air, also a delicious treat. Uh, there at Duncan. I'm not um, sure they're available Ethan, on the donut race card though, so I'll have to oh, actually oh, yeah, splurge no, no. on that. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. They. They are. They, they are not. Um. Let's go back to. Um. Let's go back to Brian here for for your number four. All right. So my number four <clears throat> is a staple. Uh, mm -hmm. And as showcased in this 1989 TV commercial, you'll hear why this humble farm food. Uh, made my list. McDonald's new country style McChicken sandwich. Come and get it. Now get that all white breast of chicken. chicken. Cooked up country style. Juicy on the inside, crispy coating on the out, lettuce and mayo. That's what country style's about. Come and get it. All white breast of ch ch chicken. chicken. Take it back to the <laughs> Woo! The McDonald's McChicken Sandwich, which <laughs> unfortunately... <laughs> okay, so this one is, it, it's not a direct McChicken to McChicken stare down, but Nathan, uh, tell us your, your, your closest uh, facsimile on your list here. Uh, are you referring to my number three? Yes, I am. Uh, yeah, I. This is the original chicken sandwich from Burger King. Okay, so we are gonna go head to head. So I'm assuming the original chicken sandwich is probably pretty similar, right? It's a basic uh, chicken sandwich. There is one key I, difference. It's well, shape. Shape. Oh, okay. All right. There, yes. This is where we're going head to head. What's better, Burger King or McDonald's in the chicken sandwich? Um, uh, Nathan, I'm going to have you continue here. Brian, I'm, uh, I'm going to give you the last word, which will hopefully uh, sway me back to you. So, Nathan, take it away. <clears throat> well, I there uh, for a long time, there was a Burger King near where I worked, and it was my last minute. If I hadn't been able to eat, if I had forgotten to eat, or if I was just irresponsible enough to get up in time, you know, for, for breakfast at 2 p.m., Burger King was there. And basically what it comes down to is I'm not about to have a burger from Burger King because I haven't ever had a good experience of one of those where then I like if I had to go do something afterwards, I would if I ate a burger from Burger King, I'm going to need to lay down for at least two or three days. So <laughs> so I go with the, the original chicken sandwich. It's 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 fairly offensive. It's it's easy enough and it doesn't leave me in a coma. And mm -hmm. it has the very pleasing sort of oblong rectangular shape instead of the circular shape you will find at mcdonald's and sure. so it's uh there's uh, it's it's just much more pleasing to uh to the eye and as far as flavor well it's it's a chicken sandwich so i they don't they don't put too much of the of the the, the sauce on it uh which sometimes happens at mcdonald's uh and at the uh local burger king that i've attended most recently they uh show jeopardy with a Spanish language overdub, so I've been working on my Spanish while eating the original oh. chicken sandwich and learning some uh, some potpourri facts. So, yeah, honestly, that's about it for that's pretty much all I've got for this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, K K S uh, Nebraska for two hundred. Um, <laughs> sorry, okay, um, that was I don't know if that was oh, right or not. Boy. <laughs> what is I don't know. Uh, okay, hold on. Quick question here. So sweets. You like it round, 
savories, you like an oblong, it sounds like. Or will you eat a long john for a donut? I, I, I do I do like the the long john for the donut okay. as well. Yeah. So Okay. This was just you checking. just you you asked me what the difference was. This is the only thing I could come up with. <laughs> <laughs> Are you do you ever so it sounds like you never look forward to Burger King. You, you, you're not driving and you're not like, ooh, Burger King, and you stop and you pull over. Yeah, like, it's this is it's my a, last. This is my last option. It's I don't even I don't even see Burger King when the thought comes into my mind. It's I'll be in the car and I'll be like, oh fuck, I gotta go to Burger King, and uh, <laughs> then I go to Burger King. Mm-hmm. It's like if I if I, I end that. up at Burger King, I have made bad choices within the last 24 hours at some sure. point. Uber Cinco would like sure. to thank today's sponsor, Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, I mean, the, the Burger King commercials are definitely the best in that they are the strangest and most creepy. Right? I love like, the like creepy the king, king. big fan. Yeah. Creepy There's, King is a little too much for me, but um, in, uh, you know, in my but, home, but McDonald's is almost inoffensive, you know? Exactly. This, this is just a little celebrity fact, a little celebrity juice for you, which we don't <laughs> oh, do a lot God. of on this show, but I have some. Woo. So I have awesome. I have some uh, secondhand evidence that Drew Carey prefers Burger King to McDonald's, and I'll tell you why. In my in the town where I was born, Monmouth, USA, there is a <laughs> Burger King and a McDonald's that are right next door to each other, right off the highway. And in fact, the McDonald's is slightly easier to get to. It's about thirty yards closer to the exit off of the highway. <laughs> and one time. <laughs> In the early 2000s, several people that I knew were at Burger King, and Drew Carey went to the Burger King and not to the McDonald's. So there you have it. Drew Carey is a Burger King guy and not a McDonald's guy. Holy shit. That's that's a giant story. That's... (laughs) That we need to get yeah. this to page six right now. TMZ. <laughs> I've been sitting on this uh, one for years, waiting for the right opportunity, the right venue to, wow. to throw this out there. But you, there you have it. Wow. I don't know how your butt didn't burst before you farted this one out. This is incredible. <laughs> uh, do you think he was on his way to gamble on a, on like a r- riverboat in Iowa or something? Or I that is a mystery. What anybody is doing in in. Warren County where I'm from uh, is there's just we don't have a lot of celebrity sightings this is yeah the only one I can think of although uh, former baseball uh, all-star 500 plus home runs Jim Tomey is from near Peoria and a bunch of us did see him in a McDonald's in Farmington Illinois on our way to a volleyball game once so that's about it that's that's <laughs> the, the two celebrity fast out. food oh, wow that's the, those are the stories I have in 34 years of, uh, yeah, these- of Warren County living these stories are audacious, just like Burger King's food science program. Um, I, <laughs> let, let me let me uh, give give you some some nuts and bolts here. Uh, at one point, Burger King they may still do it. Experimented with French fries that had an outer layer that they made from like you know extruded potatoes, and then they added beef flavoring to it. Mm. So you'd have a more flavorful, meatier French fry, I guess. Um, it was called and- the French Fry BMT. <laughs> <laughs> Bigger, meatier, <laughs> tastier, uh, and it, it, they had a little, cr- a little crunchier outside shell. But it was all, you know, it was all smoke and mirrors. It wasn't like the real potato being put on a pedestal here. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, the the absolute abomination they're they're like Halloween buns that they do, where they dye the the buns black, and you know, make when it I think terrifying. squid ink, I think Burger King. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. That's where I want to get my squid ink buns. All right, so that is what we've heard about Burger King. It's pretty Burger Kingy. Uh, I'm not totally impressed, but I get it, and I'll do it if I have to. Uh, so let's move on over <laughs> to, to Brian. Brian, tell us why the McChicken um, and McDonald's is uh, superior to the Burger King. First of all, it is BMT. It is bigger, meatier, and tastier. It is a thicker patty, although it is compressed to a circle. Your shitty oblong Burger King patties have to be pressed to be thinned out to fill up that area of bun. So you're getting the same amount of chicken, but you're getting more breading, which is unhealthier. So for the healthy option, you go to McDonald's, which is farm fresh chicken, as the ad said. You get a perfect round patty. You can see the pepper flakes, so you know it's seasoned. And you said that yours was covered in a sauce. Mine are covered in mayonnaise. 
good American mayonnaise, and that shredded lettuce from Subway. <laughs> so I get all the things <laughs> I like on my McChicken. And when I get the angry drive through attendant who cannot hear me through it, and they're like, what do you want? McChicken! It comes out. It just has to come out. And I will be extremely happy once I receive it because there's always a surprise when you open a McChicken. It's never fully assembled. So you have no idea <laughs> if it's going to be a skew this way or a bun inverted or just flooding with lettuce like a lotus flower. You have no idea how much <laughs> quantity you're going to get. It changes every time and it's a fun little surprise. It's like a Cracker Jack box. Uh, so yep. it's uh, that's why I like the McChicken. It, it's a safe choice. It's a quality choice. And it's at front of mind every time. And it was my go to in college when I would have to get I would get something at McDonald's that I would call the McChicken sandwich, which is a McChicken, a McDouble and then another McChicken. And you eat all three of those in the 10 minutes you have from your 120 class to your 130 class. You <laughs> shove those down your gullet and you have enough <laughs> juice to get through the rest of the day. I, I, this I, I do want to point out that, Brian, you were the first person in the history of time to utter this sentence, which you started at the beginning with. If you want the healthy option, you go to McDonald's. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm sure some Internet was sleuth out there will, will compare the calories and prove me wrong. But uh... <laughs> uh, I was about to ask, how many McChickens do you order? Because one is not enough. You need at least two, perhaps three. Uh, but I think I, I got my answer there. Uh, a, a McChicken is the taste I want to start my meal and end my meal with. But a McChicken's sure. not enough. So if you, if you sandwich it with a burger in the middle, you get you get a nice, well-rounded uh, food pyramid, if you will, of flavors. Because I'm sure there's sugar yeah. in the beef, too. So I get it all. Yeah. Um, this is my endorsement of the McChicken. When I was in high school, the first time I ever uh, uh, tried chewing tobacco, it was just after we used to hang out at the McDonald's by my high school. You know, you just go to the parking lot and just park and, you know, turn music on and you know, stand outside and, you know, flirt or yell at people or whatever. Um, and I got three McChickens and some fries, w was going home. Someone left their chewing tobacco in my car. I said, you know what? I'll try it. I am, I had to pull over. I was so dizzy. I almost crashed my car. I got out and vomited all over it, just everything that was in my belly right out in the middle of the street, got back in my car, got home woozy. The next day, afternoon break between uh, study hall and choir, I went and got two McChickens, and they were delicious. Um, so it cures even all. with that taste in my mouth, it does. It's delicious. It's the um, modern day chicken soup for the soul, is what it is. Oh my God! I you no one could have said that better. That was like, man, that uh, that's yes. Thank you so much. You're inspiring me, you're um, and you're gonna inspire me now. I apologize, Nathan, to give Brian the three points here on the chicken battle uh, today on the fast food under pressure Uber Cinco. Uh, there it is, Brian. You got your three points. Enjoy, Nathan. Bring us to your number four. We are we're 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 moving like some turtles today here. We we we, we gotta speed this this uh, shiz up here. Uh, well, I'm covering a lot of the same ground here, so we don't have to take too much time because my okay. number four is a McDonald's item. It's a chicken item, ten piece yeah. chicken nuggets with barbecue sauce. This is. This is after I've opted to not go with the Big Mac, which is something I ate a lot when I was in high school. We would drive mm -hmm. up to Monmouth to the Big M Supper Club, as we called it fondly. <laughs> and it was like in the summer, I remember it would be like we would play basketball all day, like for whatever reason. And then we, we had a summer league softball. And in the middle of this, I could go eat a mcdonald's big mac and a 10 piece chicken nuggets and fries and drink a the, the large sprite and then i could head off and i could still run around like a crazy person for two hours and feel absolutely nothing and now the idea of doing that just makes me want to cry uh so <laughs> if i find myself in mcdonald's i usually go to chicken nuggets because it's sort of safe and inoffensive and it's not gonna make me feel like absolute garbage although i do also want to say uh when I lived overseas, if I was having a really, really bad day and was feeling really homesick, I would go to McDonald's and get the Big Mac 
because it was sort of like the American embassy to me. And there was a, some sort of <laughs> strange comfort. I know the chemicals and the, the scientific process behind this are not comforting, but it was comforting to me to know that the hospital that I was born at, which is maybe a hundred yards away from the McDonald's in my near my hometown, the Big Mac I could get there and the Big Mac I could get in London would be exactly the same. <laughs> they could have they could have been built in the same laboratory and then frozen in carbonite and flown to two different McDonald's locations. They were exactly the same. So it was sort of a comfort food to me. Uh, I do want to tell one my favorite McDonald's story. Uh which it starts outside of McDonald's, but I was in high school. This is this is just to illustrate how bored we were in little tiny Warren County and <laughs> how like f- how the stories we shared overlapped is we're driving down uh, Main Street in Monmouth. My cousin Tyler is driving. I'm sitting shotgun. A couple people are in the back, including my friend uh, Terp. And we pass a guy who's riding a bicycle. It's like nine o'clock at night. There's a guy riding a bicycle. And we're all silent. And I see the guy on the bicycle. And I say, hey, isn't that the uh, and Terp just leaned forward and said, no, no, no. Different guy, different guy. And then my cousin Tyler, after like 10 seconds, was like, how the hell did you know what he was talking about? Because I hadn't even I hadn't even <laughs> identified at I hadn't given any clues to what the story. And and he and so I, I started to open my mouth. He's like, no, no, I don't want to hear it from you. I want to hear it from Terp. And he's like, Terp, who is he talking about? And he's like, oh, that was the guy who uh, was drunk at McDonald's and threatened to fight Kevin and ended up uh, walking into the glass uh, and, and like almost breaking his nose. And I was like, yeah, that's exactly who I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So uh, also hats off to the uh, staff at McDonald's in Monmouth in the year 2004 who kept those windows absolutely spotless so that this drunk guy (laughs) who is threatening my friend literally came. He like he had like the fight walk going like he was, you know, Mm -hmm. leaning forward. He was on the tips of his toes. He was ready to to put his weight into a punch. And he just came at that window and boom. And uh, he hit the (laughs) hit the sidewalk like a ton of bricks. And got laughed at pretty hard by us and everybody else who was there. And uh, then we, while he was picking himself up, we left. And so the fight never happened. And uh, my gosh. Wow. Hats off to the McDonald's staff out there because they have to deal with so much phony baloney late at night at McDonald's. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of uh, Wahoos in the drive through as well. Um, so thank you, McDonald's staff. Uh, we appreciate you. Um, quick question here. Nuggets, they used to be real shitty that what I remember as a kid. Have they improved over the past couple of years? And also, will you guys ever go chicken tenders? Are, are those, I mean, obviously they're more expensive. Uh, tell me what's going on w- w- with the Nuggets. Well, I I don't think they have really changed in, in quality or flavor, t- to be honest. No. And, and I think that's fine. And I won't go tenders because I'm going for fast food. I'm going mm-hmm. for the, the lowest common denominator here. I'm indulging. Chicken sure. tenders is just a little higher class. That's it's a lot more the like the the white meat. That's a little, it's a little dare I say healthier. It's supposed to be a little <laughs> more nourishing. So it, it, you know, if if I want to step up from nuggets, I'm going to take ten or eleven steps up from nuggets, and I'm going to have Good chicken point. cordon bleu. If I want some ooh, cheap fast ooh. chicken, I'm going to get the fast food chicken and the, the nuggets. Okay, Brian. The nuggets are a hundred percent white meat, so it's real. So what are you, what are you going to oh. do, bro? Wow. Damn. We have another spokesman for McDonald's on board here. I love it. <laughs> um, now, also, of course, one one thing of barbecue sauce, is that enough for 10 pieces? Or, or oh, no. Oh, no. no. Uh, two is two is not even. I'd say it's a 2.5 barbecue three to, sauce. Three to four minimum. Yeah, you got to get it. You got to have some extra. And, well, and if you're getting fries along, too, you're going to want to dip those fries in the barbecue sauce. So you're never going to have enough of the barbecue sauce. Never. True. Never. Um. Okay, that is uh, Brian. We already heard your number four, uh, Nathan. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you two points for this one because I, I feel like you you gave a, a a pretty good defense, but it wasn't fully throated uh, for your Nuggets. Uh, so I'm just gonna give you two. I know I, I've only been given three so far. Uh, I have been generous, um, but uh, Nathan, we already heard your number three, of course, your chicken sandwich. So Brian, move us right along here to your number three. Yeah, so my number three is probably the most modern, if not the most woke choice on my list, shall we say. 
And that Hello? is, of course. We brought in the biggest Beyond Meat fan we know as our newest employee to help introduce our new Beyond Sausage Sandwich. Uh, you want that plant-based great taste? Fresh out the oven. Mm. Employee of the month is at it again, y'all. Available nationwide, only at Dunkin'. Yes, that was plant <laughs> expert Snoop Dogg selling you the Beyond <laughs> Sausage Breakfast Sandwich from Dunkin' Donuts. So this has very quickly risen to the top of my very quick breakfast get. Uh, so when I was still going to the office over a year ago now, I would stop and get a morning coffee. And then after a while, I was getting sick of my uh, overly fattening croissant bacon egg and cheese thing that I was getting. And this is when the impossible and the Beyond Meats became available. And I'm like, ah, whatever. I'll try it. I'll try it. This patty is way more flavorful than any of their other actual meat options on their menu. So I actually keep ordering it based on the taste. It actually just tastes good. It's that it's not it's well spiced. It tastes different than anything else I've ever had. Plus on an English muffin, it's a lot smaller of a sandwich, so I'm not eating as much bread and it's it's quick. It's a good choice and it's just quickly became one of my favorites. So I got nothing else to say about it that it's delicious. What's uh? What else do you think about when you're pulling up to Dunkin' besides this? Are, 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 do you ever feel the the, the siren song of uh, of of the of the uh, the wake up wraps or to go back to your croissant or maybe some donuts or is this is this always what you're going to number one with? I try to be like if I'm going there in the morning before work, I should not get donuts. That's that's a sure. bad way to start the day. Um, yeah. I will tr always try and have breakfast at home, but if I can't, I am going to get a coffee anyway. I'm just going to get my breakfast food from there. I go, I order my large hot coffee with cream and two equal, and then I want You take my it hot. Oh, yeah, I get a hot coffee. Oh, okay. Wow, hot coffee. Holy crap. All right. Oh, yeah, my, my mouth is immune now <laughs> to the temperature of whatever Dunkin' is, and it's still 100 degrees cooler than whatever McDonald's serves their coffee at. So McDonald's, yep. fix your coffee game. It sucks. You go to Dunkin', you get your large hot coffee, and you mm -hmm. nurse that little baby, and it stays hot in that cup for me at least until 11 a.m. at the office. So it's too hot to drink on the drive. By the time I get to work, it's perfect. And then for my first hour of emails or so, I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in a good mood sipping my Dunkin' coffee after I ingested my Beyond Sausage sandwich on the ride in. Nathan, have you had any of these, uh, these Beyond Meats or the... Uh uh, what, what, what's the other brand uh, beyond me and uh, whatever it is Im impossible Plant based yes impossible thank you I have not had any of these things well there's they, a there, you yeah. should go to the Burger King and get an impossible Whopper and maybe your mind will be changed I they aren't too bad I no I I just don't want to <laughs> I, I don't want to you can't make me yeah we can you know what I, I mean I, I already I, don't I, have burgers at Burger King I don't I'm just not interested this is the, I never expected this to happen, but I know Nathan, you haven't seen Parks and Rec, so you, you you won't understand this reference. But Brian, you are the Chris Traeger of this burger off, and Nathan is the Ron Swanson. I never expected that to happen. I know, I know, I am not one for this, but you are turning a new page, Brian. This is this is this is interesting. And if they sold Beyond Sausage at the Food and Stuff, I would buy it there because that's where yeah. I get my also, food and most of my stuff. <laughs> Beyond sausage is also, I think, a great Chicago accent a phrase too. Beyond yeah. sausage, I'll take <laughs> it. Beyond it's sausage, it. it's all those sounds hard. Beyond sausage, hold the cooler, and I'll take a large hot coffee. Thanks. There it is. <laughs> you know what? Back to the sandwich. I'll take two Tritos. All right. Thanks. I've got a hungry, hungry <laughs> folks here in the back. Um, Brian, I'm gonna. I. I I don't normally get food at Dunkin', um, so I, I wanted to give you one point for this, but I, I like that you're trying to branch out. So I'm going to give you two points here um, for your for your beyond your beyond sausage sandwich, um, and that brings us to uh, our number two. You, you, you both have a clean number two here, um, so let's go back to Nathan for your dose. Okay, this is from my London days. This was my go-to going home after a night at the pub where I tied one on. Okay. And this was a mixed meat and chips with burger sauce and garlic sauce. That was the order. And here is what that entails. So these would be at, these would be at kebab shops. And for those of you who have not been to 
to England, the kebab shop is the the drunk food. It is the late night food, and they are amazing. the The classic is the the donor kebab. You can get all kinds of kebabs. It's, it's faux Middle Eastern food, really. It's it's greasy. It's uh, just delightful. It's perfect after a long evening. But the mixed meat and chips, and this is particularly from King Kebab, which was on uh, Kingsway near the Holborn tube station. So right in the center of London. And this was it was right by the bus station that I had to uh, get from central London back to my home. So it was right. It was right next to a Burger King, actually. <laughs> but I wasn't setting Aussie, foot in that Burger King. I was going to King Kebab. Ozzy, that, that's that's right around the corner from the uh, Foggy Hog uh, pub, right? Isn't that just like whoop, just like just, like, I, just a couple I, of Johns? I remember it was a, it was right across from Shakespeare's Head. That was the, oh. the pub that was right there. Yes, but, I was yeah. just down the block on down Kingsway. Um, uh, Fox's Blister, I think, is another one. Great little <laughs> pub. Uh, I love it. Sorry, I I, I digress. I, 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 I can't I can list off all the pubs around there, but that we'll do that for my my fast five top five pubs sure. on each street in london that i went to uh, sure. <laughs> but so the the mixed meat and chips is is lamb the mixed meat is lamb and chicken and they're both on uh the mm. the spinning the rotating big spinners they called them elephant legs mm. and then they would <laughs> scythe off a portion of it oh, yeah. um and boy when, once those things got small and real skinny it just wasn't appetizing when they were no. taking off the, the center, <laughs> no, no, it's no. like th- that's been sitting there, not getting a lot of heat for God knows how long. So it was best not to look directly <laughs> at the source of your food. But anyways, you get the lamb and you get the chicken. Then they, they dump that on the chips, which are fries, and they would be the greasiest. I mean, th- these were not high quality establishments. So this this is the greasiest fries ever. And then they would take two. Uh, well, the sauces, there were not very many sauces available. Mayonnaise, Brian, was very popular. In fact, you could often see people carrying their fries in some paper, just like covered in mayonnaise. Mm-hmm. That was a thing that people actually ordered. Don't and you mean sometimes- mayonnaise? <laughs> There's, how can I eat this mayonnaise with no cutlery? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but the, the burger sauce was just knockoff special sauce from the Big Mac, nice. I, and it, okay. it would be in it would be in those big plastic um, sort of ketchup dispenser tubes that you would find at like a diner in sure. some podunk town that you're driving through. <laughs> and they've been reused and refilled, God knows how many times. And then there was a garlic sauce, which was just as generic as could be, and this would come in just a mountain size. And and I would I would go in every time and I'd think, all right, I'm not gonna do the mixed meat and chips. I'm just gonna I'm gonna look on the menu. I'm gonna get something that like even has some semblance of lettuce or a vegetable or a tomato on it. I'll get a little bit I'm gonna be slightly healthier. And then I would just I would see somebody else ordering that and I would look at them and I, every time I go, Oh, mixed meat and chips, chili, or burger sauce and garlic sauce, and then they would hand it to me and I would sit there and I would just hate eat the whole thing. <laughs> It was probably probably thirty five hundred calories in one plate, and I would just and it was so horrible and delicious at the same time, and I could I could feel my hangover from the next morning start to be soaked up and and mm-hmm. uh, dissipating, and then I would uh, haul my bloated ass out onto the bus <laughs> and then just just ride home feeling like a king uh, from King Kebab, and so this was this was. Uh, I, I ate there. The, the bus was where I caught from the. It was the 2011 2012 ag- academic year. Then I had a little sabbatical back in America. I went back to London in the spring of 2013. First night out, I was like, I know exactly where I'm going. Uh, I've had uh, I've had a few pints. I'm ready for my late night uh, mixed meat and chips at King Kebab. I head on over there. The windows are dark. I read the notice. They had been shut down due to several health code violations. <laughs> so I really, I, I really had to put this on my list because after all of those uh, late night trips there and knowing what I know now and seeing the food, it's a wonder that I'm still alive. So that's my that's my war story from the, the streets of London late at night back in my in my uh, grad school days. Have you felt your immune system get weaker since not having kebab on a regular basis? Like, like do you think it toughened your insides up or now, you know, you're, I th- I you're think susceptible? It, I, I think it had to. It, it 
it reminds me of uh, that Simpsons episode where they describe how many diseases Mr. Burns has as everybody's trying to get through the door all at once and they, they can't. There's There was so much wrong with what I was eating there that it just kind of balanced itself out. That's the only yeah. explanation for how I'm still alive and haven't had a heart attack. Um, wow. Man. Now, is this is this anything you ever shared with other people or was this always like a singular trip by yourself late at night so you could eat just talking to your mound of food as you, as you <laughs> I, disappear? I do remember sitting in that little shop with a few other friends at least once, but I can't promise it was more than once. <laughs> it was <Okay>. pretty, mostly... <laughs> This is mostly an adventure I had to go, a journey I had to take on my own to really look deep into my soul and learn something about myself. Sure. And what I learned was that I can really eat a lot of disgusting food if I <laughs> have had the if I had had the right amount of of room temperature beer. Wow, <laughs> you know we we don't all we don't all get a chance to to reach and summit you know the peak, but it sounds like you have, and and I applaud you, sir. Um, and I'm sorry that your mountain is no longer blue. Um, <laughs> it's, it's gone forever. Um, that will move us right along to Brian's number two. So now my number two is a, a yep. delectable find that I don't think yep. y'all would expect. And it is uh, from Nathan's favorite coffee conglomerate, Starbucks. This is the bacon, <laughs> sausage, and egg wrap breakfast sandwich. Now, I don't have a commercial because Starbucks is not advertised in the same way as most other fast food joints. So instead of letting the corporation speak, I'm going to let another fan of the sandwich speak. This sensual review comes from YouTube user Sidewalk Runner. Mm. Mm. I mostly got a mouthful of egg on that one. Let's go with a little bit more down the line. So I do like the crust, it's really flaky. The eggs are actually a decent quality. I wish there was a little more meat to it, but the meat here is actually fairly decent and the cheese is actually binding well with all the ingredients inside. I agree with you, Sidewalk Runner. <laughs> what a great review <laughs> of that sandwich. And may I commend your music choice? Man, does that fit a food review like none other? So I literally couldn't find anything else, but someone else just eating the sandwich on their couch, giving their review. And if you heard on early, he said he took a bite. He's like, mm, that's all egg. I'm going to move on down the line here. And then he took a side bite of the burrito to try and get some meat. Oh. <laughs> so, oh. The side bite. The side bite. Yeah. Oh. It's, uh, whatever. But uh, this is a surprising food. From Starbucks. If anybody who ever has ordered food from Starbucks, you know it's, again, it's only good if it's toasted. <laughs> you can't get anything on. It needs to be heated. Uh, it's basically all fancy Dean's breakfast sandwiches. It's the same shit that's been frozen that they need to throw in a Subway micro hot microwave for 30 seconds to make sure that you get something. And then... What's nice about this, though, is actually it crisps up the tortilla and it's actually filled with a sustainable amount of food. Usually you order something from Starbucks and you're like, I'm still hungry. I can actually order this probably six dollar burrito, which is overpriced. But if I'm already just stopping at one place and getting a coffee, I will get this burrito as well on a road trip early in the morning. The bacon, sausage and egg wrap. It's actually a, a decent uh, uh, a meal option as opposed to a snack from the uh, coffee conglomerate we know. I, I I am immediately not wanting to give you points because I Starbucks doesn't feel like fast food to me. It feels like something elevated for whatever reason because you know it, it comes from like a, you know bougie roots, if you will. Um, it's the same stuff, think, just more expensive. So it's still fast I know. food. I know it, it is fast food and I, I do know that, you know, but let's, I mean, let's be honest here. Starbucks is inching its way towards America's toilet, right? What does that mean? There, there's always a, you can always go to Starbucks and use the bathroom, right? I mean, like it's, it's a place to hang out. It's a place to get Wi-Fi. Well, That's based really on what the back, about, ba right? based on history, it kind of depends on your skin color, whether you can use the bathroom or not, unfortunately. Well, yes, that is true. Uh, and you know, but hopefully, you know, all bathrooms are equal now, and hopefully they're they're not doing that kind of bullshit. I disagree. Anymore. I still think McDonald's is the choice for for the the road trip bathroom. 
the quick jaunt in. It's always going to be clean and they'll never ask questions. Starbucks, if it's a city Starbucks, you still might need a code or a key. At least in a McDonald's, it's just free reign. Okay, you're, you're <laughs> yeah, which which worries me a little more because you know you have less privacy in a McDonald's bathroom, correct? And you but don't McDonald's know what's going on in there. does have a rigorous cleaning process. It does have to be cleaned. It looks like at least every hour, based that on the checklist. True. So that poor sap who has to do that all the time. But I always find a clean bathroom at a McDonald's, no matter how gross the rest of the restaurant is. <laughs> That's okay. That's a ver- that's a very fair point, and that is true. I've been in the restrooms at uh, you guys have been down to Piper's Alley before, right? Where Second City is that that Starbucks? Yes. Uh, used to be twenty four hours. Yes, yes, um, yes, yes. I wrote I wrote a, a number of like finals papers down there during college. I have stepped into some restrooms in there after like you know uh, 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 elderly wino was in there, if you will, perhaps, and it was mm-hmm. like. Oh my God. It's like, you know, getting ambushed in a rice paddy in Vietnam. Yep. It was terrifying. <laughs> uh, I know, I know, oh, I know that joke is callous, but my God, mm. the scent that traveled up my nose and stuck inside my brain threw me off when I was high on Adderall too. I mean, I was knocking out <laughs> like five pages an hour on, on this, on this puppy. And I had to take like a 45 minute break to gather my senses at like 2 AM, whatever it was. Um, Starbucks is is improving their food. That is true. That is something that they're Let me doing. add one caveat to that. This is what sure. this is the food you order when somebody gives you a Starbucks gift card. You might not be walking oh, into those, okay. but if you got like a $25 gift card and say you're Nathan, someone gives you a Starbucks gift card. What the fuck is Nathan going to do with a Starbucks gift card? I'll I'll tell you. He can walk in and if I'm Nathan, I'm getting a hot chocolate and this the sandwich. But if you're Nathan apparently, <laughs> what would you get, Nathan? Cheese danishes. See? Several. As See? many as I could get out, out <laughs> as many as I could milk the gift card for. How many yeah. are on that row? I'll take the row, sir. Yeah. <laughs> all the cheese danishes. I they love a good. cheese put danish. Them, put them all in this subway bag, please. Thank you. <laughs> cheese danish with jalapeno, banana peppers, and ranch. <laughs> Double toasted. <laughs> toasted twice. <laughs> Woo, that's good. <laughs> Uh, Brian, I am just, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm feeling dicey just to make it interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you one point on this one because it didn't, it didn't feel like you were really, and also that review was so, I, I, I thought it was hilarious, but it was uh, clearly an obviously bad review. I mean, he just was describing what was happening in his mouth. Wasn't giving. I didn't a, say a, a he was an expert insight. reviewer. I said he was the first reviewer I could find. <laughs> that is true. And now, uh, but still you're, you're, you're. You're getting one point. I'm sorry, but okay, uh, Nathan, fine. you're getting you're getting three for your uh, beautiful beautiful tale. Um, now, Brian, this is your chance. Your this is my one. chance. N- N- Nathan's Nathan's emptied his clip. He's he's shot it all. Here's here's your here's your shot. You got one bullet left. Again, the game I'm is gonna, in your sights. I'm gonna let the corporation speak for itself. <laughs> okay. Crunch Wrap Supreme is back. Beefy, melty, crunchy, cool, classic Taco Bell taste loaded into a flour tortilla and grilled for maximum portability. For classic Taco Bell tastes that are good to go, think outside the box. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here's my prop. A Crunch Wrap Supreme, fresh from Taco Bell, two hours ago when I ordered it, when I thought we were going to do this show, taking a bite for the audience of this cold wow. Crunch Wrap Supreme <laughs> to prove my love. This is a uh, hexagon or octagon uh, tortilla <laughs> <laughs> that has a tostada inside with ground beef, cheese, lettuce, sour cream, tomatoes, and just a, a convenient to go package that mm. pairs so nicely with your Mountain Dew Baja Blast. Mm. Oh. <laughs> mm. oh, I'm so jealous. Good. I'm so jealous. Crunchwrap Supreme, the most portable go-to of the fast foods. You know what you're going to get every time. And for a limited time, they even had a triple, double Crunchwrap Supreme. Double the tostada, double the meat, double the thickness. And it was a basketball wow. reference. I had to Google, but once I did, I got it. And I was like, man, that's a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> Crunchwrap Supreme, number one. Take another bite, Tastius. Mm. Oh, yeah. Take another bite. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Mm, let me muck, down. let me mukbang this mastication for the listeners. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Oh my god! Another great visual gag for an audio medium. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That is that is that is pure dedication. Um, I, I love that you got it delivered, um, and also it's brave of you to eat it room temp and or cold because we all know Taco Bell. It's got a steep curve when it comes to quality. Uh, when the, the Y is quality, the X is time. Um, like everything we said today, it needs to be toasted. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is a black diamond uh, line graph for sure, uh, straight down. You know what? I totally forgot about you guys referring to me as sir. Uh, and so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, sir, this is the best point. portable. What? The duct? No. Okay. Um, I'm I sorry. I respect I've, your I've, decision, I've... sir. <laughs> okay. This is, that was very nice. You both called me sir. All right, fine. You both get that point back. I totally lost control of the house rule. I apologize. That'll yes. never happen again. I feel like a complete idiot god i don't know what to do now i'm under pressure i'm under pressure uh i'm under double uh double uh mcdouble mcdouble i'll do the mcdouble that's my order okay (laughs) that's my one that's one thing i go to mcdouble extra pickles okay (sighs) brian this is an unprecedented uh uber cinco first i'm gonna give you four points for that thank you um Incredible. Uh, okay, I, I need a, just a second to tally some scores. Um, when you guys uh, are chatting, in the meantime, uh, talk about um, uh, what's what, what's what's hot on the on the on the mind right now. Um, tell me about uh, about the, um, uh, the the impeachment <laughs> trial opening <laughs> statements. Your thoughts. Go. Well, when people listen to this two weeks from now, <laughs> we're talking about the impeachment trial that will probably be over. Man, we well, have some thoughts. Well, I, I, I have a question. Yes. Is how was Brian, how was your dad at the drive thru when you were a kid? My dad at the drive thru was the same as he was at every shopping experience. Militant. <laughs> you are there for a job. <laughs> you are not there to browse. You are there to order, get, and leave. Same as a grocery store. And this frustration has now carried over into my adulthood. And apparently I am the worst person to shop with and or be in a drive through with because my patience level should be here. And it is here. <laughs> it is low. My, my, my dad didn't trust the, the audio system and he would he would lean fully out of the window and one big Mac, please. <laughs> and then he would he would snap his head back in and turn it and he would he would turn it back and he would point at either me or my sister forcefully and be like, and you're having and like if we didn't know the answer right away, we would get the death glare. And then I would be like, uh, I like a happy meal. And he whip back around out the window. One happy meal. <laughs> Just blasting the eardrums of the poor 16-year-old inside. Anyway, (laughs) those are my last thoughts on fast food. (laughs) Sorry. Also, also, sorry, Dad. My dad listened to this show. Sorry, I just sold you out. (laughs) My dad was the exact same as your dad, Nathan, only he always said every item. I feel like just a little bit wrong. Where he'd be like, uh, the big uh, Mick Mac. You're like, no, it's just Big Mac. That's, just, that's all it is. Uh, okay, I've tallied the scores, and oh, this is this is some nail biting action here, folks. But by just a hair, it's a photo finish. The man with the plan, the main comes in first. Nathan Henenfent wins this week's Uber Cinco, eleven points to Brian Ernst. Ernst is oh, ten. Man. Um, I feel like job, I feel like uh, I feel like dashing donut coming down the stretch and <laughs> oh. overtaking Biggie Bagel right at the end. And, and you know what though, this was different because going into the final thing, you were ahead and you still kept the victory. It, Brian made a, a, an attempted valiant comeback uh, with my rigged scoring. Um, but, you know, <laughs> he, he almost got there. It was very close. Uh, Cuppy Brian, coffee always gets words? the shaft. No, Cuppy coffee always gets the shaft. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> Oh man, I I it it made me so wistful for when a day I could go to a, a basketball game in person. I, I'm excited to do that uh, once again. But let's move on to our fast five. Now this is fast five top five stocks that could use a Reddit community boost. Number five, 
Pam Transportation Services, trading as PTSI. Redditors are famous for their love of culture and super funny memes. What could be better than a Pam being moved to another location? Who's Pam? Is it your mom? Perhaps your aunt, maybe your sister. And everyone knows that next level of the meme is going to involve cans of Pam being schlepped God knows where. Won't that be hilarious? <laughs> Pam Transportation <laughs> Services caters directly to the Pam in your life. Don't know a Pam? Think of a Pam like the much more rational, calm, and undickish version of your aunt Karen. Pam Transportation was booming in the 80s and 90s, but now with the decline of Pamage throughout the U.S., Pam Transportation Services desperately needs Reddit's help. Number four. Falcon Capital Acquisition Corporation, or FCAC. Falcon. <laughs> Number three, Verify Me, trading as VRME on the NASDAQ. Verify Me is every uh, influencer's wet dream. You pay them, you get the little blue check. What could be better uh, at building a base for you to then sell diarrhea tea and leg shapers to? All right, number two. Tattooed Chef, trading as TTCF. It's plant-based foods for people who give a crop. That's actually <laughs> from their website. Mexican-style street corn, zucchini street spirals, plant-based street meat. Everyone loves street meat. The kids love street meat. Millennials love things from the street. And that's why Reddit needs to help Tattooed Chef. And number one on the top five stocks that could use a Reddit community boost is Front Door Incorporated, trading as FTDR. All young snake people who walk, excuse me, all young millennials who walk everywhere with their personal computing devices, always emailing, need a place to rest their heads at night in between Huluing on their Netflix accounts. And every residence has what? A front door. Front Door Incorporated has climbed out of the below $50 share doldrums and could use Reddit's help. Boost away your redheads, because if you don't have a front door, how are you going to get to your GameStop brand video games, guys? That's where Front Door Incorporated comes in. They manufacture distribute doors that are designed built and installed as front doors a back door how about a mud flap i don't know we don't give one damn hoot about your back door let that fly but make sure you get a sturdy swinging and real front door from front door incorporated catch front door incorporated on the youtube as you like share and subscribe to your fave home talks on snapchat now that's fire flossing <laughs> and that's this week's edition of Uber Cinco. Please rate and review our show on Apple Podcasts. And once again, we love that hearty womb word of mouth. So please, guys, tell your friends about us and send them your favorite episode. Why not? And join us from the parking spot next to the trash can as he blares Led Zeppelin has been Nathan Hennenfent. And fogging up the windows of his Windstar as he unboxes his Poquito Belgrande has been <laughs> Brian Ernst. <laughs> and I've been Mitch Brinkman. And as Bisbear always says, when life suspends the sack of food out of your reach, just cut the tree down. Auf Wiedersehen and adios. <laughs> You've just listened to Uber Cinco, a production of UBK Studios. Subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your fine podcasts from. If you like what you hear and want to support the show, please visit our Patreon site at patreon.com slash UBK Studios. Every little bit helps us keep the lights on and the bill collectors at bay. Keep tabs on us on all the social media at UBK Studios, and most importantly, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see that we really are just a bunch of good Midwestern boys. Yeah.